Good evening. I'm John Tomkowiak. I'm the founding dean of the Elson S. Floyd College of Medicine. And on behalf of the 800 faculty, staff, students, I welcome all of you to our third white coat ceremony, especially family and friends who are here to support their loved ones. I also want to introduce a few of our representatives from WSU. We have Vice President and Chancellor Gerald DeWald here with us. We also have four of our Board of Regents from WSU. We have many community leaders in the audience, as well as representatives from students from our other classes, as well as faculty and staff. They, along with President Schultz, all sorts of community leaders and organizations and institutions across the state of Washington, including state and federal legislators, have helped us get to the place we are today. So how about a warm, warm round of applause for all of them? It's my pleasure now to introduce Vice President and Chancellor of the Health Science Campus, Dr. Daryl DeWald. Dean Tom Koviak, thank you very much. I'm genuinely honored to be part of your journey. This is an exciting time to join the Elson S. Floyd College of Medicine you are the largest class of medical students that we've admitted, 80 strong, and among the first classes of students who will help to mold and to shape this program for generations to come. Our faculty and staff and the entire community of Spokane and Eastern Washington are delighted you're here. This is an exciting time to be part of WSU Spokane our Health Sciences campus, which is now home to three of the university's colleges, has not only emerged as a regional health sciences education leader, but is fast expanding its research portfolio. Its attraction of world-class faculty and staff, and its development of partnerships with public and private sector to grow our influence and our impact. You are joining a campus that is filled with students who are dedicated to the health sciences. Health science care, health science access, quality across this state. We encourage you to take great advantage of the unique campus to engage with your peers in nursing, pharmacy, speech and hearing sciences, and nutrition and exercise physiology. Understanding the unique roles and value each of these professions has and will play an important part in your preparation for your practice and for providing the best care to your patients. This is also an exciting time to be in Spokane. This city is experiencing a tremendous amount of growth and investment in healthcare, in the life sciences and beyond. Companies are expanding and relocating here. New buildings are constructed and old ones are being renovated. Home values are up. New restaurants and shops are opening. Parks, streets, and schools are getting major, face, um, major facelifts and several new and exciting developments are in the works to bring even more amenities and opportunities for you. We are pleased to participate in your journey, and we are committed to helping and to challenging you to grow to be the best that you can. Dean Tom Kobiak. Thank you, Vice President Chancellor DeWald, for your remarks. What a simply amazing day. Three seconds, next, Toronto. 
Two years ago, at the inaugural white coat ceremony, I told the story of a high school football coach who told me a person can do anything for three seconds. For me, football, not so much. As a physician, though, I've had so many life-changing three-second moments, both for me and my patients, and so will you. Some of those will bring agony to you and your patients, but most of them will bring joy, relief from pain and suffering, and hope. Our profession is both terrifying and amazing at the same time. Three seconds, next, Boston. Two years ago, how about one year ago, I talked about the importance of the concept of next level. And I challenged our students and everybody in the audience to take themselves to the next level. That next version of yourself that's better than the version that there is today. And I'm going to make that same challenge again to all of you. We all should take ourselves to the next best version. Your future patients absolutely deserve that of you. And I'm going to challenge everybody in the audience, those people you love want your next best version as well. So let's agree to challenge each other to our next best version of ourselves. Three seconds, next, Los Angeles. So exactly who is this amazing group of 80 students that we have before us? Well, as the chancellor already pointed out, you do have a special distinction because you are the largest class we've ever recruited to the Elson S. Floyd College of Medicine. How about a round of applause for that? Thirty-three percent more. That's thirty-three percent more opportunities for you to change lives in the state of Washington. So let me tell you a little bit more about this class. This class hails from 20 counties across the state. Every single one of them has ties to the state of Washington. 23% actually come from rural counties. 59% are considered non-traditional. 54% are women. 55% come from socioeconomic disadvantaged backgrounds. 38% are first generation. 18% have advanced degrees. And 6% have given service to the military. And I'd like to just take a moment and invite anybody in the audience and our students, if you've served in the military, please stand and be recognized now. Thank you. Collectively, this group has done thousands of hours of service to people less fortunate than themselves, both here in Washington and across the world. And speaking of the world, you all have traveled quite a bit. These 80 students have traveled to more than 70 different countries collectively and speak 20 languages fluently. That is amazing. We have athletes, musicians, performers, dancers, bakers. I'm hoping to see some results of that soon. 
And I got to thinking, with how much you all have done, did you guys actually go to college? <laughs> you are so accomplished. Three seconds, next, Detroit. You and I know that you all worked really hard to get to this spot in your journey. But we also know that you did not get here alone. You had people helping you every step of the way. People who sacrificed for you, supported you when things were tough, when maybe you had doubts, who gave you words of encouragement, let you cry on their shoulders. So students, if you would please rise. Turn around and face the audience and show the people who have supported you your appreciation for them. All right, you may be seated. Today I'm going to answer the question, what's more important, the journey or the destination? How about we start with a few definitions? Journey, traveling from one place to another. Destination a place you travel to. I've had many journeys in my life. I've already given you a clue to some of the destinations of that journey, but I've taken other kinds of journeys as well. I've been on a journey to be a musician, to be an actor, to be a chess player, to be a hockey player. I've been on a journey to be a husband, a father, a friend, a colleague. I've been on a journey to be a faculty member, a dean, a founding dean. Some of those journeys are over. Some of those are continuing. And there's absolutely journeys I have yet to start. The Elson S. Floyd College of Medicine are on some journeys as well. We're on a journey to train future health care professionals to be the very best they can be to take care of all of us in the state of Washington. We're on a journey to become a destination for premier researchers who want to study in areas such as neuroscience, sleep, cancer, substance abuse, and population health. We're on a journey to form partnerships and relationships with organizations and institutions right here and across the state to inspire people to solve problems in challenging healthcare environments. And we're on a journey to recruit the most amazing students who identify and have a passion for our mission. There's lots more journeys that our college is on and lots more journeys we have yet to undertake. We still have this issue of solving the problem of the question, what's more important, the destination or the journey. So I'd like all of you to help me think about this for a moment. So what I'm going to ask you to do is reflect on a journey that you've already taken and completed, any kind of journey. You can close your eyes, keep your eyes open, but for about the next minute or so, I'm going to ask you some questions, and I'd like you to think about the answers to those questions for your specific journey. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Did you plan for your journey, or was it spontaneous? If you planned, did you plan for a little time or a long time? Did you have the resources for your journey, or did you have to borrow them or work for them? 
Did you have one destination in mind or many? Did you take anybody with you on your journey? Were there side trips? Were there detours? Did you get to your destination on time? Did you enjoy the journey? Did you enjoy the destination? Would you do it again? Would you make any changes? Would you recommend it to a friend or family member? Three seconds. Next. Journey. I've told the students a few times this week already that the Elson S. Floyd College of Medicine has a recipe for success for the journey that they're going to take. And I would suggest it's a recipe for success for all of us. That recipe involves following a set of priorities and following them in a certain order. I'm going to challenge everybody in the audience today, including our students, to hold true to these priorities. So students, if you don't mind helping me out a little bit on this one, I'd appreciate some help. So the number one priority is personal health. health. You got to take care of yourself before you could possibly ever take care of another human being. That means both your physical health and your mental health. And that's true for all of us. Number one priority when we wake up in the morning should be our health. After that, students, our second priority is family and friends. That's right, family and friends. If someone you love is hurting, is not in a good place, how could you ever concentrate on your task at hand? And when your task is a patient, someone who's counting on you to do your very best, you have to make sure you attend to those you love before you attend to your patient. So help those who you love, who are around you, make sure you get them in the right place before you move on to the third priority. And of course, we all know the third priority is? The job. That's right, the job. For these guys, it's studying. Studying their little hearts out to be the most amazing physicians they could possibly be. For the rest of us, it's whatever our role is, whatever we do on a day-to-day basis. But that's our recipe for success. Take care of ourselves personal health, take care of our family and friends, and then take care of the job. There is one journey that you guys are going to take that I can speak with some authority about. And I'm going to tell you about that journey in a second, but first I'm going to answer the question. I hope you figured out by now there's only one right answer to this question. It's absolutely the journey. Frankly, destinations are boring. They're a very small part of our lives. We all spend the majority of our lives on journeys. You are all on journeys right now as you sit in this room. They're the best and most important part, and they are what give us value. The journeys that we have, not only personally, but with the ones that we love. And so what I'd like to do right now is take 10 seconds and ask everybody in this room to challenge themselves to start a new journey tomorrow. Now, students, you are already on a journey to become physicians. That doesn't count. You have to think of another journey. It could be a place, or it could be the kind of journey that I talked about, maybe being a better friend, being a better daughter or son, whatever it is. But I would... 10 seconds right now, I'm going to challenge everybody to commit to a new journey. (laughs) 
So I talked about this journey that I know you're undertaking, that journey to be the most amazing physician you can possibly be. Let you know right now the journey's incredibly tough, absolutely hard. It will take you to places that you cannot even imagine. As I said previously, there will be parts of the journey that will be terrifying. But there will be many more parts of the journey that will be awesome, that will be gratifying, that will be satisfying, and some of them even mystifying. Some of you might find it hard to continue the journey at moments. And that's okay. Because we know you had all these family and friends and folks to support you to this point in your journey. And I've already told you now, you have 800 more faculty, staff, students, future patients to help you on the next part of your journey. So we will absolutely be able to continue the journey. It is the one journey in your life that I will tell you is absolutely worth taking. And if you've been listening very closely to what I've said tonight, you will understand my last sentiment. I hope you never reach your destination. Congratulations. It's my pleasure now to introduce one of our colleagues here at the Elson S. Floyd College of Medicine. This doctor came to us with an amazing pedigree of training. She served across the world in multiple continents and countries, helping medical schools get started and bringing medical education to rural and underserved areas. She is well liked by her colleagues she is respected as a physician and a clinician. She is one of our founding uh, deans here at the College of Medicine. And it's really my privilege and honor to invite Dr. Don DeWitt to the stage. Hello, everyone. Students, parents, colleagues, friends, cougs. We hope this white coat ceremony will inspire each one of you. To our students, congratulations and welcome to the medical community. The white coat has long been a symbol of trust and respect given to physicians. Being given the privilege of wearing this coat represents a moment of celebration and success, but also symbolically marks the beginning of a long journey toward becoming a qualified physician. When someone asks me, what do you do? My reply is, I am a physician. As in other professions, but not many jobs, the I am can't always be separated from the rest of your life. In medical school, you will work hard to learn the facts, skills, and clinical reasoning required to become a resident. You will choose a specialty based on your skills, talents, and your role models. Most importantly, you will develop your professional identity as a physician, which will be distinctly different from who you are now. A better, more nuanced, wiser, stronger you. This will be challenging. For many years when my children were upset or striving for something, fixing climate change, playing a new instrument, but feeling helpless, I would say, it's okay. You don't have your superpowers yet. Do your best and be patient. Since ESCOM has its own mysterious superhero, I would like to elaborate on that analogy. Imagine that your white coat is a cape. Most superheroes have a secret persona. As a junior superhero, you will face the challenges of honing your new powers while managing your former private life. Your cape transforms you 
and signals to the public that you can leap tall buildings and solve medical mysteries. You're famous, how fun is that? On the other hand, superheroes must respond at a moment's notice, no matter what is happening in their lives, and must continually battle the desire to reveal their secret identities. Like superheroes, we must carefully guard our professional persona when we are in the public eye and on Facebook. Superheroes may have the ability to defy gravity and surf the universe, but they may not be able to whisk their loved ones off on a whim, just as being a physician requires balancing our values. Let me illustrate. One beautiful August evening, many years ago, I was out picking blackberries with my children. My pager went off and I felt irritated at having to curtail the wonderful moment. As I hurried the children toward home, I called out, watch out, owie bushes. And my three-year-old son blithely replied, why, Dr. Dave will feel me better. His childhood faith that his pediatrician would be there for him reminded me that someone with that same faith needed me. I shouldered my cape and went to help. To paraphrase Shakespeare and Spider-Man's Uncle Ben, we lucky, lucky few must balance our great power with great responsibility, measure by measure. How should you begin? We already know that you are amazing, but your superpowers are nascent. When I started medical school, I felt grateful every day and could barely keep myself on the ground. I knew it would be hard. I knew I would have to stay up all night on call, and I do not do it all without sleep. I struggled at times with wanting, needing to play outside, to sleep, to be carefree. I couldn't see ahead to the day-to-day -day wonders, the privilege, and the many gifts that people and events in my profession would give me. When you are struggling to learn new skills, hone them, apply them, when you are hungry and tired and desperately wish for a rest instead, when you are learning to be a secret keeper, learning to control your emotions, even when you are screaming or crying inside, and learning to give of yourself when putting the patient first is difficult. Remember that the joy of helping or seeing someone thrive, or a hug, or a thank you for caring doctor will more than compensate. Those challenges and experiences will transform you. As you master the art of caring for yourself, your colleagues, and your patients, you will become a physician. Perhaps you have questions about whether white coats are a good idea. Will your white coat, cape, make you too egotistical, separate you from your patients, spread germs, or turn you even into a minor villain at times? Personally, I love my white coat. When I put it on, I feel my special role and responsibilities. But when I worked in Australia at an Aboriginal health center, my white coat made patients feel uncomfortable, and I quickly abandoned it because gaining my patient's trust was paramount. Yes, I missed the pockets. In contrast, research shows that most patients in the US prefer doctors in white coats. Parenthetically, white coats also represent cleanliness. By the way, clean is important, so wash yours often. In sum, as you earn the trust and respect of your patients and colleagues, your white coat is respectful recognition that earning the status of physician is not easy. When I got married, another big life choice, someone said, choose right, then be right. You have chosen this profession, and we at EFSCOM have chosen you. As you don your white coat, celebrate and remember, tonight you have the right stuff, and you belong. Now, work to represent yourselves and our profession well. In other words, commit to understand what it means to be right as you become a physician. At that point, I hope your white coat will become part of you and that it feels like it fits perfectly. Good job, Don. That was amazing. Thank you. It's now my pleasure to introduce our Senior Associate Dean for Student Affairs, Admissions, and Enrollment, Dr. Layla Harrison, who will begin the white coat ceremony, the actual coating of our students.
So, Dr. Harrison. Dr. DeWald, would you join me? Hello again. It is my honor to begin the cloaking procession. From the Everett campus, Morgan Abbey. Brooke Beon. <laughs> Mariko Ching. Nicholas Chalk. <laughs> James Cho. Jay Choi. <laughs> Faith Dice. Joseph Hendrickson. <laughs> Julie Wong. Oksana Klimenko. <laughs> Adam Knott. Sarah Krawczak. <laughs> Ryan 
Veronica Lobova. Samuel Marbay. <laughs> Justin Seymour. Joseph Shen. <laughs> Anna Tang. Ivy Tran. <laughs> Olivia Vargas. Olivia Wang. From the Spokane campus, Jeremy All. <laughs> Sam Adams. Kirsten Ashton. <laughs> Christopher Berry. Garrison Colvin. <laughs> 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 
Connor Dixon. Marlena Ensley. <laughs> Cade Epic. Ashlyn Felker. <laughs> Casey Johnson. Abby Knickerbocker. <laughs> Rob Meyer. Ali Navarrete. <laughs> Yuri Nesteruk. Emily Poe. <laughs> Jacelyn Reed. Kalkana Sivanesam. <laughs> Abby Webb. Abraham Weiss. <laughs> Lana Yurkin.
from the Tri-Cities campus, Cody Avalos. Danica Balziger. <laughs> Crystal Bruce. Raven Burns. <laughs> Brom Kohler. Cameron Cup. <laughs> Brianna Diaz. Josiah Gikungi. <laughs> Rachel Kuderna. Caitlin Larson. <laughs> Felicia Liu. Sarah Lewis. <laughs> Esmeralda Lopez. Tian Nguyen. <laughs> Austin. 
Autumn Peck. Christian Pham. <laughs> Devin Pluman. Jesus Salcedo. <laughs> Courtney Sherrick. Shi Min Tan. From the Vancouver campus, Joelle Burvell. <laughs> Ross Boudreau. Michelle Chu. <laughs> Kenny Darcy. Emmanuel Garcia. <laughs> Athena Hoppy. Kevin Cagle. <laughs> Laura Khalil.
Thomas Ku. Chloe Lee. <laughs> Jennifer Lee. Jacob Mansfield. Grace McPhail. Pranav Melacharavu. <laughs> Han Nguyen. Dalen Richards. <laughs> Bailey Simon. Danielle Spellacy. <laughs> Max Sutherland. Corey Thurman. I don't know why I'm standing behind the podium. I don't need to do that. I'll wait for you, Larry. Before I announce our new class, I want to 
take care of a few things. There are so many people that go in to making this night to be a first class experience for everyone. And I just want to show our appreciation for all those who've worked behind the scenes, who worked at the front of the house, the back of the house. Let's all give them a round of applause. Well, you know how I feel about journeys and destinations. I hope a few of you might share the journey that you decided on a little bit ago that you're going to embark upon. I hope you share that with me afterwards. We're going to have an amazing opportunity to take some pictures if you'd like. We'll have a photo booth set up sort of towards the front doors. And you and your loved one can take as many pictures uh, as you want. And I'll stay till however late it takes to get all the pictures done. So I hope uh, all of you will do that. When we do get ready to leave, we're going to ask that the students be allowed to be dismissed first. The students and I are going to go upstairs and take a picture. And then as soon as we're done with that, we'll release the students back to all of you, family and friends, so that you can congratulate them. But if you would let us please leave the auditorium first, we would be also grateful. Well, how about you guys rise for me? And I'd like to introduce you all to the Elson S. Floyd Class of 2023. If you would turn around. Students, if you would stay standing, and I'd invite any other clinicians in the audience, because now we're going to read our oath. So if any clinicians in the audience would like to stand and read the oath with the students, I would invite you to do that now. Dr. DeWitt, will you lead us, please? Yes, the oath is in the middle of your program, where the staple is, if you're searching for it madly. Students, could you just turn around for a second? <laughs> I know that was confusing. We practiced, but we weren't in here. Okay, ready? I promise, to the best of my ability, to practice medicine with compassion and thoughtfulness. I recognize that membership within this profession comes with privileges, but also attendant responsibilities and ethical duties. I will value the discoveries of those physicians and scientists upon whose shoulders I stand and in time will seek to impart my knowledge to others. I will recognize the limits of my own understanding and continue with diligence to keep abreast of advances in medicine. For the benefit of patients, when indicated, I will seek the collaboration of other physicians and colleagues. I will endeavor to discover and understand my own biases in acknowledging that all persons are entitled to non-discriminatory access to medical care, I recognize that health is a human right. I pledge to be an advocate for those in need. I will remember that medicine has the power to both heal and to harm. In my practice of medicine, I will place patient interests before my own. I will respect the privacy, individuality, and autonomy of patients and vow to neither treat patients nor carry out research on human beings without freely informed consent. I will follow my conscience, even when doing so creates hardship. I will recognize the importance of my own well-being to the relationship between physician and patient, caring for myself as I do for those around me. I will safeguard the health of each patient, but also the health of the population. I make this declaration on my honor 
and in front of my family, friends, classmates, and teachers to be upheld throughout my time as a member of this profession. Stay standing because we are going to be leaving soon. I hope all of you will stay for a long time and socialize and get to know all of us. Thank you so much for coming tonight and I look forward to seeing you in the photo line. Thank you.